From the Barbados Today Newsroom, this is your evening news update for Tuesday, March 15. There is no major reduction in the cost of goods on the horizon just yet. That's a caution from members of the private sector as they analyze Monday's budget delivered by Prime Minister Mia Motley. As part of measures to ease the high cost of living, the Prime Minister put a cap on freight costs. But at the post-budget forum hosted by the Barbados Chamber of Industry and Commerce this morning, President Anthony Branker said they are anxious to understand how the cap will be applied. And there's so much ambiguity around what this means. Because as a practitioner and importer, I would have thought that we would, if you had a freight cost, below the capped level, you would apply that value in the calculation of your CIF. I am understanding that that is not how it is going to work. I've been told to, to listen to the minister's re, uh, reply to the budget this afternoon to understand how the freight capping is going to work. I am understanding also that if you're bringing in a 20-foot container, it will be one fee regardless. And if you're bringing in a 40-foot container, it is that 8,000. That makes no sense. But, business community, let us listen to the response from the Minister of Finance this afternoon and find out how that works. He cautioned that current trends suggest there's no escaping rising prices. Our first cost on products that we import into Barbados across various categories increase by as much as 20%. Um, my good friend, um, I, I don't think I saw him here today, Yusuf called me, Yusuf Bobolia called and said that he had significant increases from at least three suppliers in one week. So I just want to context, I wanted to contextualize the expectations because when you have your first cost increasing by 20, 25% and your freight component, even if it is capped, uh, coming out of, let's say, well, depend because there's another discussion that I'll mention before I sit down. But when your first cost is increasing and you are paying 10%, 15%, or even 20% on some of these products and the duty is removed, the net effect is not necessarily going to be a significant saving. So I just wanted to make that clear because we have to realize how significant increases we are seeing already. Deputy Principal of the University of the West Indies Cayfield Campus, Professor Winston Moore, described the cap on freight costs as an interesting measure in addressing price increases. We see prices in, um, coming in, uh, sorry, as goods come into Barbados, we're going to see this pass on, but it's going to take a while before those goods hit the shelf. So it's, there's going to be a little bit of a lag effect um, coming in. Meanwhile, local manufacturers say it's time for government to change its approach to manufacturing. President of the Barbados Manufacturers Association, John Marshall, says, while the sector generates foreign exchange, provides jobs, and contributes to overall economic growth, there is nothing in the budget to decrease their production costs. He called on the Mayor Motley administration to do more to make the sector more sustainable. Data shows that manufacturing within Barbados declined significantly over the last 30 years. And that time frame coincides with a period where successive governments operated under the mindset the only way to reduce the cost of living is to reduce the cost of finished product entering the island. I'd argue in real terms that mindset has not reduced the cost of living and in fact inflation in Barbados exceeds most industrial averages and the same is true I'm sure for nearly every other country that took this approach. So what then is a point of perpetuating the mindset? Rather they, the government, should turn their focus onto a much more sustainable path and look to develop local manufacturing. Meanwhile, an assurance from Junior Finance Minister Ryan Strawn that government is focused on getting through these uncertain times. He expressed concern about the unfolding war in Ukraine, warning it could have serious consequences if it continues to escalate. If the world goes to war, it will have serious consequences. And we've already started to see some of those consequences with respect to the response to the actions in, in Ukraine. And I, sir, hope that it will be short-lived. I hope it will be short-lived. I also hope, sir, that throughout the course of this year, that we will not see any further disruptions by way of natural disasters, 
or any other disruption, sir, because the truth is that the economy as it stands now and our capacity, sir, our capacity, sir, as a country to, res to, to respond is actually quite constrained. Government intends to crack down on unfair and excessive interest rates being offered by some local money lending institutions. Business Development Minister Kerry Simmons made this clear during Monday's launch of the Barbados Trust Fund Limited new online discussion series, Let's Talk Entrepreneurship. It is one of the nooses that are being wrapped around the neck of entrepreneurial endeavor in Barbados and stifling the life of entrepreneurship. Debt can prove to be disastrous for those people who are embarking on an entrepreneurial journey if it is not managed and if they're not trained in how to avoid debt. But yet we have a country in which there are people who are offering loans at 30 something percent interest rates. And we have young people going into business and fueling that business with a credit card. And, and, and that credit card is being paid back at 20 somebody percent interest rate. And, and, and we ask ourselves then, why, with, with surprise, why does the business fail? Well, the business fails largely because of the fact that in difficult circumstances when cash flow is tight and you have not been trained in how to manage things well, then you are effectively paying for your light bill and you're paying for your water bill and you're paying for the day-to-day -day and inputs to the business on borrowed money, which you're borrowing at extortionary rates. There's regional and international news after this short break. Caribbean Cool is a refreshing juice drink that contains 100% vitamin C that you can enjoy any time of the day. It has a refreshingly awesome range of Caribbean flavors. Moby, orange, fruit punch, pineapple, sorrel, and pineapple coconut. Suitable for any occasion. Caribbean Cool. More oxygen. Means more energy. Means more adventure. Cure oxygen. Natural spring water infused with more oxygen to improve your energy, immunity, and performance. The next generation of hydration. Cure Oxygen, nature's ultimate water. To regional news, Guyana has lifted its COVID-19 restrictions, paving the way for the resumption of social activities. President Irfan Ali also removed vaccine rules for people entering public places, and wearing a mask is no longer mandatory. People are now able to freely participate in social activities and are not mandated to wear face masks, though this is still encouraged. And with vaccination rules largely gone, it is now only mandated that all operators and passengers of any land, water or air transport present a negative PCR test or approved antigen test taken within 72 hours of arriving in Guyana, along with their proof of vaccination. Attorney General and Minister of Legal Affairs Anil Nandlal said the relaxation of these rules signals that Guyana is returning to a semblance of normalcy. The new COVID measures, we should have the country opening back to, as far as possible, the position anti the COVID outbreak and business should resume to normalcy, restaurants, all public places, people can continue to gather, there are no longer restrictions on distancing, social distancing, there are no longer restrictions in terms of opening of business places, etc. On the international front is day 20 of Russia's war in Ukraine and more people are dying. More from Al Jazeera Television. Firefighters continue battling the blazes here in this 16-story building that was hit uh, in the early hours of Tuesday in the west of the Ukrainian capital. I'm going to step aside just to give you an idea of the extent of the damage. There are uh, many, many teams of emergency responders still here. They have been here for the last couple of hours, uh, at least uh, four hours or so trying to put out this fire in front of that building there is a huge crater that is probably where the shell uh, hit uh, and of course uh, this is um, 
a building surrounded by other buildings. This is a, a residential area uh, with uh, about 200,000 people that live in the vicinity. Um, and many of the residents, uh, some of the survivors of this uh, attack and others that live nearby are uh, very much in shock this morning, saying they woke up uh, to a loud bang and then the fire. Some were able to leave the building by themselves. Others were uh, on higher floors, were not able to leave alone. One woman died on the 16th floor waiting for rescue. Uh, in the balcony of her apartment. Uh, we've been um, also uh, observing the amount of debris around here. Many, many cars destroyed. I'm right next to a truck that is uh, virtually completely destroyed. That's news, but for the very latest, visit our website at www.barbidastoday.bb. You can also subscribe to our e-paper, email updates, or like us on Facebook, and sign up for our breaking news alerts via WhatsApp. We're also on Izumi Media and Bus Terminals, as well as Screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you. You can also hear us on Mix 96.9 FM and Capital Media HD 99.3 FM.